at the Serving Anderson, Roan, and Morgan Counties, you're watching the Channel 12 Evening News on BBB Communications Cable Channel 12. And now, your Anderson County News. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dudley Evans on this edition of News, October 24th. It is a Thursday. A lot to talk about. We'll get right to that. Thanks for joining us. Some rain moving in tomorrow, but right now I'm enjoying some beautiful blue skies out there and fall-like conditions for sure. And radar really indicates nothing out there as we begin our newscast to show you again dry conditions all across our viewing area. And to prove that, we'll go outside to the beautiful skies above the studios here at the Grove Center. Midtown Oak Ridge, uh, fair condition, 68 degrees. Humidity is 32%. No problem with the wind speeds. Barometer 30.23, starting to climb a little bit more, dew point 37. So increasing clouds late tonight, early in the morning, near 48 degrees tonight. With the cloud cover blanketing us a little bit. Showers are likely tomorrow afternoon after 3 o'clock. Rain moves in. Near 61 tomorrow, 60% chance of rain. So if you're going to ball games tomorrow night, no, no doubt the parking will be needed. Friday night showers continue near 54 degrees, 80% chance of coverage for the rain throughout the nighttime. And we'll look at Saturday forecast. Brandon Bonds will, our weather forecaster, in just a few minutes here on Channel 12. First in the news last night, the City of Oak Ridge and its Community Development Department on Wednesday afternoon at the Oak Ridge Chamber Office presented to an audience of about 100, standing room only, basically the proposed possibilities for the mixed-use redevelopment of the Wilson Street Corridor near the former Museum of, of uh, Science and Energy for a so-called connection for the Main Street downtown future look. The community invited to view the presentation, which uses data compiled over several years of study and public engagement, focused, as you see, on the needs of Oak Ridge residents, business owners, and visitors. Although Wednesday's meeting revealed plans in the very early stages, speakers presented future retail numbers for the city and tax revenues, which could be in the neighborhood of around $1 million a year extra. The City of Oak Ridge secured grant funding for this project under an agreement with the State of Tennessee Department of Transportation, TDOT, and coordinated through the Regional Transportation Planning Organization for the purpose of envisioning a new downtown Oak Ridge. The goal of the study is to explore what could be along this area of Wilson Street, including multi-story mixed-use development adjacent to the ongoing retail development of Main Street Oak Ridge. This location will serve as a catalyst for new and expanded growth. Beginning with the Manhattan Project, Oak Ridge was born without a distinct downtown. That explained Community Development Director Wayne Vlasius last night. He says, we're now working with local stakeholders and a team of highly skilled economists, engineers, and architectural designers to create a vision of how this can be put into motion. Over the years, multiple plans have highlighted the need for a central downtown that can leverage new development and foster a stronger sense of identity and community from, a, uh, from the 1988 comprehensive plan to the city center plan in 2000, and most recently in the 2019 Oak Ridge City Blueprint and amendments to the Main Street Development Plan. When the program ended last night, those in attendance were asked to post sticky notes with the uh, ideas for the panel to look at. Questions about the new downtown planning process or any other community development project can be directed to the department by calling 425-3531 or by emailing, emailing rather, vimery at oakridgetn.gov for more information. TDOT has notified the city of Clinton now that the Market Street Bridge Repair Project, as you'll see here, originally slated to have started earlier this month, is now beginning this Sunday, the 27th. The project will address structural issues on the bridge on Seavers Boulevard over Market Street, and crews will also repair and replace the sidewalks along the stretch of roadway as well. It's expected to last about 160 days. The project will force partial lane closures, which will start Sunday night for the early morning traffic for the duration, starting again this Sunday, when eastbound traffic will be shifted to the center of the bridge, with one lane headed east and two lanes heading west. Phase one of the project is scheduled to last about 59 days. Following that, phase two will close the center of the bridge, funneling traffic into one eastbound and one westbound lane for about 26 days. 
In addition to these changes, during phases one and two, Market Street under the bridge will be down to a single lane. Phase three will see westbound traffic down to a single lane with both eastbound lanes remaining open. And that final phase is slated to last about 67 days. If there are no changes, I should say if there's any changes to the schedule for lane closures, we will of course pass that along to you here at Channel 12 and our friends over at Wish Radio. A Facebook post in Jacksboro, Tennessee garnering national attention. In early October, Jacksboro elementary teacher Brooke Goins was helping her students with a math worksheet when a student asked when the food lady was coming back. The food lady is a woman with a local church who delivers bags of food to students in need. Since it was a short week that week and she knew the food was, uh, wasn't coming, she texted her friends and let them know she was going to Walmart. They immediately chipped in and helped her buy the student spaghetti, the SpaghettiOs rather, applesauce, Slim Jims, and other snacks. Goins then posted the story on her Facebook page to thank the school for coming together to make sure her students didn't go hungry. However, the post went much further than just East Tennessee, attracting the attention of people as far away as New York, California, and Washington resulting in over 250 boxes of food and shelving and donations of over $1,000. As of yesterday, it had more than 40,000 shares. The post caught the attention of superstar entertainer Jennifer Lopez and her fiancé baseball legend Alex Rodriguez, who recently became part owners of a company specializing in frozen meals. The couple sent the school's year supply, a, a year supply of food from the company, and even FaceTimed the teachers and students to share the news with them. The response to the initial post and the resulting donations allowed the school to start a food pantry called the Eagle Market. Teachers say that they have received so many donations that they have had to move the food pantry from a storage closet to a full classroom. To those that have supported our school and community, whether it be through donation or volunteering, you've touched their hearts, according to Goins. She appreciates all the support they're getting there. Congratulations. That's a good story. Don't forget, Oak Ridge Fire Department is teaming up with the National Fire Protection Agency, or association rather, better known as NFPA, to promote this year's fire prevention campaign. Not every hero wears a cape is the name of it. Plan and practice your escape. The campaign aims to educate everyone about the small but important actions that they can take to keep themselves and those around them safe. The Oak Ridge Fire Department designates the entire month of October for fire prevention awareness, expanding on the nationwide fire prevention week. Oak Ridge Fire Department will host a series of events in support of this year's fire prevention campaign, including the Fire and Crime Prevention Celebration this coming Saturday at Bissell Park, as well as visits to elementary and middle schools, such as one scheduled for tomorrow, Friday, the 25th at Linden Elementary School here in Oak Ridge. Firefighters there will give a lively presentation tailored to the students at each school, reminding them about the theme, not every hero wears a cape, plan and practice your escape. Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation's uh, meeting tonight we've been telling you about is the Division of Water Resources with TDEC. They'll hold that public hearing this evening, starting as we speak, basically, regarding a proposal to reroute about 3,500 feet of Worthington Branch near Bull Run in the Claxton community in order to construct that landfill and haul road for disposal of coal combustion residual waste, commonly referred to as coal ash from the Bull Run fossil plant, which is scheduled to close by the end of 2023. Claxton Elementary School at 2218 Clinton Highway in Powell is the location Thursday tonight, beginning again, as we mentioned, at 5, and it will go till 6 for that informational session, and that's Eastern Time, and then they'll go in from 6 to 7 and have open discussion as well. More news after the break here on TV 12. Stay with us. Do you want more phone calls? If no, listen up. Want someone local you can work with as opposed to some stranger calling you? October 1 starts Medicare season. November 1 starts health care season. David Vidragovich, me, I am a local agent and I am here to help. You call me, you only deal with me. Call, text 865-806-5837. Again, 865-806-5837. For three generations, Jerry Duncan Ford and Duncan Family Automotive Group have earned a reputation of dependability, honesty, and character. We're proud of our Harriman roots and are grateful to serve the growing community of East Tennessee. Just a short drive from West Knoxville, we invite you to experience the difference today. Welcome to the family. 
Roan Metals Group has been serving East Tennessee for decades. Locally owned and operated with convenient hours of operations, Roan Metals buys all types of scrap metal. Nothing's too big or too small. Still have that clunker sitting around? We've been buying them for years. Roan Metals Group are specialists in industrial scrap. We have what it takes to get any size job done. Roan Metals urges you to recycle responsibly. Scrap with only licensed dealers, a member of the TSRA and the ISRI. Roan Metals Group, turn that scrap into cash. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 110,000 participants here in Tennessee who take part in high school sports. At Earl Duff Subaru, our reputation has been built on taking care of customers. We are Tennessee's only eight-time winner of the Subaru Love Promise Customer Commitment Award. This year, we also earned the Love Promise Community Commitment Award given for enhancing the areas we serve. This means you can be sure you'll have an excellent experience when you visit our store and be proud you're dealing with a company that gives back to local causes. Read our online reviews and come to Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. The all-new, completely redesigned 2020 Outback is available now at Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. Welcome back. Tomorrow at the New Hope Center here in Oak Ridge, Cold War Patriots, a community resource organization that is the nation's strongest and most sustained voice advocating for worker benefits, hosting their free Cold War Patriots official National Day of Remembrance, a ceremony tomorrow Friday the 25th in Oak Ridge to honor Y-12, X-10, O-R, N-L, and K-25 workers. The event is from 9.30 in the morning until 12.30 at the New Hope Center at the Y-12 National Security Complex here Scarborough Road in Oak Ridge. Event details again from 12.30 or 9.30 to 12.30. Again, the New Hope Center right here in Oak Ridge. Each year of the National Day of Remembrance, formally celebrated on October 30th, is des designated by a bipartisan resolution passed by the U.S. Senate to honor the contributions and sacrifices of nuclear weapons workers. This is the 11th year the National Day of Remembrance has been observed. The event is sponsored by Professional Case Management, the leading in home care company for nuclear weapons and uranium workers, and the Cancer Support Community of East Tennessee, and an organization dedicated to ensuring no one faces cancer alone. Mobile Meals, uh, the area's Meals on Wheels provider, will provide lunch there tomorrow. Again, New Hope Center, 930 to 1230 for all you guys and ladies that worked at Oak Ridge tomorrow. Formal hearing session. Uh, again, this would be the one I didn't want in there, Mr. Producer. Let me get through that. All right. The Oak Ridge Recreation and Parks Department is hosting the annual Children's Halloween Party this evening, the 24th, from 6 till 8. This event is now in its 37th year and will be attended by hundreds of local children and their families. Activities will be held inside the Oak Ridge Civic Center tonight, seen right there on 1403 Oak Ridge Turnpike, and a hayride will be offered outside A.K. Bissell Park. No admission tonight. And participation in, in uh, most activities requires one or more tickets uh, for about uh, $1. I should say uh, can, tickets can be purchased at the Civic Center. The cost is $0.25 cents per ticket or $5 for a pack of 20 A lot of candy there tonight at the Civic Center in Oak Ridge. Take them down. And with that similarity, the city of Clinton will host their second annual trick-or-treat celebration this Sunday, October 27th. This Sunday, the 27th, at the Clinton Community Center. The event is bigger and better than last year's inaugural celebration and will include glow-in-the-dark bowling laser tag, fun and games, arts and crafts, and movies inside the community center. And the gym will be lined by tables from businesses, churches, nonprofit groups, and other organizations handing out candy to all the trick-or-treaters. Outside this year, the Little Ponderosa Zoo will have a petting zoo set up on the softball field, and there will be food vendors located at the football stadium. The event runs from 2 to 5 this coming uh, Saturday at the Clinton Community Center. Uh, it said Sunday on there, but I guess it runs from 2 to 5. I think that is on uh, Saturday. So dress up to your Halloween costume and grab that trick bucket for an afternoon of fa family friendly fun, family friendly fun in Clinton. We'll check on that for you tomorrow and make sure that's not Sunday. But it did say Sunday in one of my scripts, and now it said Saturday. Grove Center Festival Association, right here where we're located, looking for local businesses to help sponsor and return the Grove Center Pumpkin Fest. Free family-friendly festival will be this Saturday, the 26th, at the historic Grove Center. 
Starts right here from 12 to 5. The Grove Center Pumpkin Fest will be highlighting local Grove Center merchants. The events will include kid and pet costume contests, Halloween parade, pie eating contest, trick or treating for the kids, craft vendors, live music, a scavenger hunt, pumpkin carving contest, and more. For information on the event and on how to become a festival sponsor, you can call Sherry at 865-963-7357 and go online as well to uh, Grove Center Pumpkin Fest at gmail.com. That's this Saturday as well. A lot going on. Hey, the Coal Creek Miners Museum will be hosting a coal miner celebration on November 2nd this year from 5 till 6.30 at the Main Street Baptist Church in Rocky Top to honor the miners that worked at the Tennessee, Kentucky, and West Virginia coal mines. In addition, the Coal Creek Miners Museum seen here will be hosting guided tours of the historical sites in Coal Creek and historians will be on hand at the Coal Creek Miners Museum from noon to four to welcome visitors and talk about the historical events that made coal mining in Coal Creek unique near Rocky Top. The guided tours to historical sites will depart from the Coal Creek Miners Museum right downtown Rocky Top between 12 noon and uh, three and will include stops at Militia Hill where the militia was stationed during the Coal Creek War, Riceville Community Church and Leach Cemetery where Freighterville Miner Circle is located. Each tour will last about an hour. The guided tours of the historical sites and admission to the museum are free, but reservations for the tour are recommended by calling 865-340-3269. All proceeds from this event will go to fund the remodel of the second floor at the Coal Creek Miners Museum and Museum Operations. The museum's purpose is to honor the miners and the impact that they had on our communities and now they want to host an event to bring the miners together to reconnect to each other and honor them for their years of hard work. That according to Tim Isbell, chairperson of the Cold Creek Miners Museum, in that press release. So again, that's coming up on November the 2nd. We'll be back with your look back on history, then Brandon Bonds will bring you the weather, and then we'll be back with sports and funeral announcements. Stay with us. We are ASAP of Anderson, and our mission is to prevent and reduce substance misuse among youth and adults in Anderson County. Prevention is providing information and building skills, but it is also providing support, changing access, changing consequences, changing the physical design of the community, and modifying policy. What role will you play in preventing substance misuse? Find out more at asapofanderson.org. At Earl Duff Subaru, our reputation has been built on taking care of customers. We are Tennessee's only eight-time winner of the Subaru Love Promise Customer Commitment Award. This year, we also earned the Love Promise Community Commitment Award given for enhancing the areas we serve. This means you can be sure you'll have an excellent experience when you visit our store and be proud you're dealing with a company that gives back to local causes. Read our online reviews and come to Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. The all-new, completely redesigned 2020 Outback is available now at Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. According to the internet, 40% of the people do not answer the phone if they do not know the number. My job is to answer your call and help you get the right Medicare or health care plan. I'm David Vudragovich, licensed agent since 2007. Avoid avoiding phone calls and just call or text 865-806-5837. Again, 865-806-5837. At Satterville Music, we have Martin guitars for everyone. I love my Elvis Presley Martin guitar. Thank you very much. I can ride my horse and play my cowboy Martin. Me play Big Chief Martin. I confiscate Martins up to $50,000. Shazam! I only gave $499 for my Martin. That's Satterville Music 2836 Clinton Highway. Call 865-945-3595. For three generations, Jerry Duncan Ford and Duncan Family Automotive Group have earned a reputation of dependability, honesty, and character. We're proud of our Harriman roots and are grateful to serve the growing community of East Tennessee. Just a short drive from West Knoxville, we invite you to experience the difference today. Welcome to the family. October 24th, 1945, birth of the United Nations. 
The charter of the global organization takes effect nearly two months after the Japanese surrender ending World War II. 1952. Dwight Eisenhower promises to bring the Korean War to an end. The Republican candidate for president makes his pledge on the campaign trail. Only in that way could I learn how best to serve the American people in the cause of peace. I shall go to Korea. Eisenhower wins the presidential election and visits Korea over a month later. 2002, in Maryland, authorities arrest two people in connection with weeks of deadly sniper attacks in the Washington, D.C. area. They catch John Mohammed and Lee Malvo after the series of shootings kills 10 people and wounds three. Mohammed is sentenced to death in Virginia and life in prison in Maryland. Malvo gets a life sentence in both states. 2003. The supersonic Concorde makes its last transatlantic trip, concluding 27 years of commercial service. Three of the luxury passenger jets land at Heathrow Airport outside London, all arriving from New York's John F. Kennedy Airport. 2005. Civil rights activist Rosa Parks dies. In 1955, Parks made a simple decision that sparked a revolution. When a white man demanded she give up her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus, the then 42-year-old seamstress said no. Her act of defiance earned her the title Mother of the Civil Rights Movement. Parks was 92. And 1991. Gene Roddenberry, creator of the sci-fi TV series Star Trek, dies in Santa Monica, California. He was 70. Today in History, October 24th, Carlotta Bradley, The Associated Press. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Thursday to you. Brandon Bonds here with your Secret City Weather Forecast. Taking a look here at the satellite across the area right now. We are seeing clear skies overhead into your evening commute hours. Fortunately, though, we'll have cloud cover build overnight into your Friday as we'll have some shower chances as we get into the afternoon hours. Current temperatures out there, though, pretty comfortable this afternoon. Sitting right now in Knoxville at 69. 68 for Clinton and Oak Ridge, 66 for Morristown, and in the plateau off to our west, Crossville sitting in those low to mid 60s. For our current surface map, we have that high pressure system stuck around the area, keeping things dry and pretty cool out there. The past couple of days has pushed off to the north and east. That'll allow for a cold front from our west to slide into the area. Cooler temperatures into your Friday and into the weekend there. But the main storyline is the shower chances as we get into Friday afternoon and through the weekend there. Looking to have up to an inch of rainfall depending on where you're at here in East Tennessee. Bulk of this system will slide through Middle Tennessee, Middle Kentucky area there. So definitely some rainfall. That'll definitely help the overall drought we're seeing across the area from earlier this morning. This is the latest release of our drought monitor for East Tennessee. An extreme drought for parts of Bradley, Hamilton, and Ray counties down to our south. And uh, we have a severe drought right outside of that with much of East Tennessee under a moderate drought. So any rainfall that we're going to see will definitely help the next couple of days here. And like I said, looking around an inch to parts of Middle Tennessee up to two to two and a half inches there. So lots of rainfall expected this weekend there. That'll definitely help the overall drought monitor for Tennessee, mainly East Tennessee, as we get into early next week. So take a look here at that model guidance over the next couple of days into your weekend there. That rain will begin pushing in by early tomorrow afternoon. Some light scattered showers coming more moderate and heavy as we get into the later part of your afternoon, overnight Friday into Saturday. Those will continue throughout Saturday afternoon, on and off throughout the day there. For we'll have our last push by Sunday early afternoon before we start clearing out there and uh, drying out for the later half of your weekend into early next week. For tonight, though, expecting those clouds begin increasing overnight, expecting lows in those mid to upper 40s and winds pretty calm. For tomorrow morning, we'll have cloudy skies to start the day there. Temperatures around that 50 degree mark by the afternoon, though. Definitely remember your umbrella out the way out, out the door tomorrow morning, expecting those showers to move in by the afternoon. Highs to be around 60 degrees. 
for your full forecast here brought to you by Jandon's Butcher Shop of Oak Ridge. As we get into Friday, clouds will increase by the morning hours. They're allowing for showers by the afternoon. So don't forget your umbrellas out the door tomorrow morning. Highs to be in those lower 60s. Saturday, much of the same. They're expecting showers on and off throughout the day. Highs in those upper 60s. Sunday, though, showers will begin to move out by the afternoon hours highs in those upper 60s and to start your work week next week could see some sun out there to begin the day because see some isolated showers on and off throughout the day with this system highs to be around that 70 degree mark that's all we have here from secret city weather on your thursday don't forget your umbrellas out the door as we're expecting showers to end your work week thank you brandon appreciate that and with that in sports a lot of games uh, some games i should say have been now changed till tonight uh, when we move to tonight, I should say. High school football week 10, here we go. A few football games scheduled for this e for Friday has now been rescheduled to this evening due to predictions of inclement weather. Moving into the East Tennessee area on Friday night. Anderson County, now they will now play at East Hamilton this evening. They're already there. While Kingston will play host to Pigeon Forge tonight. Again, a game in Kingston tonight. And, of course, this week's rivalry Thursday game, Oak Ridge will travel to Powell tonight. That was already scheduled. That can be seen on my VLT. Friday schedule, Campbell County will be at Clinton. WYSH will bring you that tomorrow night, their Fox and Farley football game. Oakdale at Harriman tomorrow night. Sunbright at Wartburg. These are still Friday schedules. Midway at Greenback, Gatlinburg Pit at Alcoa. Halls at Sevier County, Farragut at Hardin Valley, West at Fulton. Carter at Gibbs, Central at South Doyle, Jellico at Cosby. And our Channel 12, OEB Law Friday Night Game of the Week is going to be a good one. The Coalfield Yellow Jackets traveling over to Oliver Springs, the short six-mile trip to face against the Bobcats. This is an important conference game for both teams as they look towards the playoffs in two weeks. Our crew will be at Oliver Springs tomorrow night. Hopefully they won't get too wet to broadcast at 7. Kickoff starting at 7.30. The game will be live right here on Channel 12, or you can stream it on bbbtv12.com, as well as our Facebook page and YouTube channel. And immediately following Friday's game will be the Five Star Preps Friday Night Scoreboard Show, live right here with David Queener and Jonathan Cox as they take your call. So big Friday night football matchups, no doubt. Well, tonight the Minnesota Vikings and Washington Redskins kick off the week's eight NFL season with a Thursday night football matchup at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Kickoff is set for 8.20 tonight and will be televised on Fox and the NFL Network. You can also stream it using Amazon Prime. The Vikings sit in a record, actually sit in second place in the NFC North, one game behind Green Bay and are coming off their third straight victory. Meanwhile, the Redskins got shut out 9 to nothing last week with San Francisco in a rain-soaked matchup. Not doing too good as, uh, again, looks like Washington is in the midst of a forgettable season, having already fired Coach Jay Gruden. And the Nationals are taking a 2-0 lead back home as Washington defeated the Houston Astros 12-3 last night in Game 2 of the World Series on Wednesday night at, at Minute Maid Park in Houston. Wow, the Nationals scored six runs in the seventh inning, totaling 17 runs in the first two games of the World Series, the most by a road team since the 1960 Yankees. And again, that game is slated for this, uh, I should say for tomorrow night, rather. The Nationals now have a 2-0 lead over the Astros in the best of seven series and will host game three in D.C. tomorrow night at 8 o'clock on Fox. And that's sports. Funeral announcements, we find Peggy Langley, Peggy Sue Ford Langley, 83 of Oak Ridge, passed away Tuesday at the Groves of Oak Ridge. The family will have a graveside service Saturday, 11 a.m. at Union Church Cemetery. Jackson Funeral Services, Oliver Springs, directing. Roy Wayne Jones, Roy Jones, age, age 61 of Oneida, passed away Tuesday. The family receiving friends 5 till 7 this evening with his going home service at 7 tonight at Black Oak Baptist Church in Oneida, Jones Mortuary, serving the family. James Jimmy Edward Shipwash, James Shipwash, 78 of 10 Mile, passed away Tuesday at Methodist Medical. He was a faithful member of Shiloh Baptist Church south of Kingston, receiving a friends will be Friday, 5 to 7, Shiloh Baptist Church. Service will be at 7 in the church sanctuary. Those who would like to go in procession to William Cemetery in 10 Mile will meet at Shiloh Baptist, 1030 Saturday morning, for an 11 o'clock graveside service. Fraker Funeral Home, Kingston, directing. Robert Allen Harris, Bob Harris, age 88 of Kingston, passed away Tuesday at Jamestown Assisted Living. An active member of First Baptist in Kingston, receiving a friends will be Sunday between 2 and 4 at First Baptist in Kingston with funeral to follow at 4. 
Bird will be 11 a.m. Monday morning, Coe Hill Cemetery in Morgan County with military honors. Kiker Funeral Home directing. John William Townsend, Jr., 88 Eleanor City, passed away Monday, receiving a friend Saturday between 10 and 12 at Fellowship Baptist in Lenore City. He will be buried at Rose Cemetery, Kiker Funeral Home, Kingston, directing. Johnny Rains of Kingston, age 95, passing away Saturday last weekend at Jamestown Assisted Living. Receiving a friend's started at 5, goes till 7 tonight at Kikers in Kingston. And that's our news that we have at this time on our TV 12 coverage. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a wonderful evening. You deserve that. We'll be back with more news tomorrow, Lord willing, on another edition, a Friday edition right here on TV 12. I'm Billy Evans. Hope to see you back here then. Until then, so long. Subaru, our reputation has been built on taking care of customers. We are Tennessee's only eight-time winner of the Subaru Love Promise Customer Commitment Award. This year, we also earned the Love Promise Community Commitment Award given for enhancing the areas we serve. This means you can be sure you'll have an excellent experience when you visit our store and be proud you're dealing with a company that gives back to local causes. Read our online reviews, then come to Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. The all-new, completely redesigned 2020 Outback is available now at Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. Roan Metals Group has been serving East Tennessee for decades, locally owned and operated with convenient hours of operation. Roan Metals buys all types of scrap metal. Nothing's too big or too small. Still have that clunker sitting around? We've been buying them for years. Roan Metals Group are specialists in industrial scrap. We have what it takes to get any size job done. Roan Metals urges you to recycle responsibly. Scrap with only licensed dealers, a member of the TSRA and the ISRI. Roan Metals Group, turn that scrap into cash. I wish I would have been alerted about this rising water before now. With hyperreach, this situation could have been avoided. Did you know Roan County is threatened by many different hazards, including flooding, tornadoes, straight line winds, as well as chemical or radiological incidents? Hyperreach will send out emergency notifications directly to you regarding the imminent threat of natural and man-made disasters, as well as other public safety hazards. Sign up at RoanCountyTN.gov slash OES or call 717-4116. Registration is quick, easy, and free. Take a few minutes of time now to avoid tragedy later. For three generations, Jerry Duncan Ford and Duncan Family Automotive Group have earned a reputation of dependability, honesty, and character. We're proud of our Harriman roots and are grateful to serve the growing community of East Tennessee. Just a short drive from West Knoxville, we invite you to experience the difference today. Welcome to the family. For 30 years, Reno Sporting Goods has been a leader in supplying the highest quality equipment and apparel for sports teams throughout East Tennessee. Athletes, fans, and coaches alike rely on the knowledge and experience that only Reno's can provide. For the best in team sports, shop Reno Sporting Goods. Serving Anderson, Roan, and Morgan Counties, you're watching the Channel 12 Evening News on BBB Communications Cable Channel 12. And now, your Roan County News. Welcome to Channel 12's Local News. I'm Daly Evans. Thanks for joining me today on this uh, 24th of October, a very busy month, no doubt. Thursday edition. Straight ahead, your news. But first up, the radar. Yeah, no rain out there right now as we look outside. Everything dry, and that'll be the case for much of the day tomorrow until around 3. So with that, outside the studios, we go to a fair-conditioned sky. It looks good out there. 68. Humidity, 32%. Of course, that sun glare to the west is killing most people, but <laughs> without the sun visor down. 
Wind speeds variable 5 to 10. Barometric pressure is steady. Dew point 37. Increasing clouds tonight. That will keep our temperatures from falling too much. About 48 when you get up in the morning. You'll see clouds as rain moves in tomorrow afternoon around 60% coverage after 3. 61 is your high tomorrow. Then tomorrow night, rain chances 80% into early Saturday morning. And it looks like 54 if you're at overnight low tomorrow night. We'll look at that with Brandon Bonds and your weather forecast in just a few minutes. In news for us today, out of Rome County, we now have information from a wreck which occurred on Sunday evening, the 20th of October, east of Kingston. The Highway Patrol Rescue Squad also responding. They did say three people were injured in a head-on crash on Highway 70 this week in Rome County. Trooper Alex Evans said a 2003 Honda Pilot driven by 40-year-old Arliss J. Morgan III of Friendsville, Tennessee, was traveling east when he crossed the center line and struck an oncoming 2005 Cadillac operated by 57-year-old Henry Willis III of Rockwood. Willis of Rockwood and two passengers in his car, 59-year-old Regina Pryor of Knoxville and a 17-year-old juvenile from Knoxville were injured. Morgan, who was not hurt, was arrested for DUI, felony possession of meth with intent to sell, driving on a revoked license and possession of drug paraphernalia. This coming from the head-on crash Sunday night east of Kingston. State Senator Ken Yeager, Republican of Kingston, is going to be visiting the Blue Springs Pontoon Boat Company in Kingston this Next Tuesday, the 29th at 3.30, the owners who are members of the National Federation of Independent Businesses will present him with the Guardian of Small Business Award. The Guardian of Small Business Award is the most prestigious honor that NFIB bestows on legislators in recognition of their efforts to support small business issues. In Tennessee, they're leading small business association. The public is invited to attend, and the address is at 685 Lead Landing Way, Kingston, Again, next Tuesday at 3.30. Two local high schools stepped up to benefit those in need, one of them particularly in Kingston, as Rome County High School gave a check for about $810 to officials with Operation Reach for this year's program. This money was raised during homecoming week and will help children and families in need for Christmas. Cumberland County School recently concluded its harvest for hunger food drive, benefiting the Cumberland Good Samaritans Food Program. That school presented a check for $2,176 to that local food program as well. Cold War Patriots, we'll move that video on up there, Dylan, if we could, sir, our producer, is going to be um, now operating uh, tomorrow's big day of remembrance. It's at the Y-12 New Hope Center right here in Oak Ridge. If you're a former X-10, K-25, uh, current one as well, Y-12 worker, O-R-N-L, you're invited to be there. Cold War Patriots, again, that resource organization that is the nation's strongest and most sustained voice advocating for worker benefits, hosting that free Cold War Patriots official day of remembrance tomorrow on Friday. And that will start at 9.30 in the morning, goes till 12.30 at the New Hope Center in Oak Ridge. And with that, uh, we will mention that come out this Saturday night, as it's that time of the year again with, the, with our annual Gospel Singers Reunion. The event is hosted by yours truly. It's coming up this Saturday at the Rockwood Event Center. This year's Food Drive event, according to me, will bring good talent to the Event Center for the annual reunion. This year you will see and hear myself, Dudley Evans, and Victorious, the Lighthouse Trio from Crossville, Phil Chesney from Chattanooga, Billy Wright and Friends, you see them right here on Siderville, Believer's Voice from Ten Mile, Sandy Sheldon from Coalfield, the Disciples with her as well, and Josh Collins from Middlesbrough, Kentucky, and Randy Kincannon from Etowah. As part of the music, food, and fellowship, we ask those who attend this coming Saturday night to bring a non-perishable food item for our area food pantry in Rockwood. Please consider giving non-perishable foods for this annual event. The Rockwood Event Center Museum, located at the corner of Chamberlain Avenue and West Rockwood Street downtown, will have refreshments and some prizes given away. The singing date again for our annual Singers Reunion Canned Food Drive is this Saturday, starting at 6, doors open at 5. For information, you can give me a call at 315-0505. Thanks to our participating sponsors as well. And we'll mention those on tomorrow's newscast. But right now, Nathan Ray joins us next. It is... Well, the National Prescription Drug Take-Back Day this Saturday in Rome County. They're putting that into motion with the Rome County Anti-Drug Coalition. He'll be back to talk about how you can get rid of those unwanted or unused medications right after the break. Stay with us.
has the brand names you want. All the latest from Adidas, Under Armour, and more. From custom embroidery to screen printing, it's all about the game. For over 30 years, Reno Sporting Goods. At Earl Luff Subaru, our reputation has been built on taking care of customers. We're Tennessee's only eight-time winner of the Subaru Love Promise Customer Commitment Award. This year, we also earned the Love Promise Community Commitment Award given for enhancing the areas we serve. This means you can be sure you'll have an excellent experience when you visit our store and be proud you're dealing with a company that gives back to local causes. Read our online reviews and come to Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. The all-new, completely redesigned 2020 Outback is available now at Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. If I could go anywhere on summer break, I'd go to Sanibel Island, Florida. Hawaii. London. The beach in Barbados. My summer vacation plans are to go on a cruise to the Bahamas and to Sanibel Island. To like the beach a couple of times. I got cheer camp to go to. A beach in Florida with my family. I'm gonna go to cheer camp. I would avoid vaping by just like staying away from like the people that do it and stuff. By not being around people who vape. Not being around people that vape. Getting out of the situation as quick as possible. Junk cars, aluminum cans. We'll buy it on the spot and we'll pay you a lot. We treat you like family at RMG. Yeah, we treat you like family at RMG. Rome Metals is located just off of Highway 27 between Harriman and Rockwood. David Vidragovich, licensed insurance agent since 2007. Health care, Medicare, even short-term medical, if you are healthy. Policies that pay a cash benefit to you for accident, cancer, heart attack, and stroke. Life insurance for your family or to bury you. Vision, dental, hearing aids. And now, even auto, homeowners, and business policies. Do not go online and have a bunch of strangers calling you. Have somebody you can meet with face-to-face deal with over the phone, text, or email. For three generations, Jerry Duncan Ford and Duncan Family Automotive Group have earned a reputation of dependability, honesty, and character. We're proud of our Harriman roots and are grateful to serve the growing community of East Tennessee. Just a short drive from West Knoxville, we invite you to experience the difference today. Welcome to the family. Welcome back, Nathan Ray joins us, and uh, we appreciate Nathan stopping by. It's having. a very important day this Saturday, yeah. nationwide, actually. Yeah, nationwide. So he's with the Roan County Anti-Drug Coalition. They're setting up in three locations this coming Saturday yep. to help you get rid of those unwanted and unused medicines, and even yep. for pet supplies as well, if yeah. you have them. Nathan, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, too. Thanks Talk about it. Uh, big day Saturday. I know you got yeah. your staff working hard. Yeah, so we will be, um, we'll be all over Roan County, so we'll be in, in Harriman. Uh, we'll be in Rockwood and we'll be in Kingston. There you go. Uh, Kingston at the Food City. Um, you'll be able to drop off your. I just, right. I just dropped it. Yeah. Okay. You'll be able to drop off your medications, um, pet medications. Just drop the ball. Right? Yeah, just drop the ball. <laughs> um, pet medications, but also we're really excited um, to find out that the CDC is actually, or the DEA is actually allowing us to take back um, vaping devices Good. as well. So if you've caught your kids vaping or you found any vaping mm -hmm. um, paraphernalia mm -hmm. in their rooms, you can bring that. that um, those devices down to um, to the collection site, and we can dispose of it for you. They're going to be at Rockwood's Walmart. Yep, ten till two. That's and, right. And uh, that's a big deal. What one interest? The food side or the main interest? We will Do we be, know yet? We'll be right in between. Okay. Um, we'll There's be right in the middle. Walk, yeah. Yep. And we'll be outside. Um, even if it's raining, uh, we'll be outside. So. Um, you can just drive up and drop off and, and be on your way. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. They'll, they'll take yep. it from your car windows, whatever. Yep. No questions asked, of course, as always. And then in Kingston at Lad Landings Food City, we'll yep. be over there. And also in Harriman, uh, we'll be there at the uh, at Walgreens. Food Walgreens. City. Oh, Walgreens. Walgreens in Harriman. Oh, and yeah. the Midtown Energy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Midtown. Yep. Yeah. All right, that's the three locations again. Yeah. And uh, so last year, pretty successful, but we're always wanting more. I mean, it's not like they're making anything off of this, but what it right. does, it helps them to keep the caliber of their collections in. So therefore, grant funding can come in. That's I mean, right. you got to be active. You That's be right. Active. Yeah, you have to be, when you're a coalition, you're grant funding, you got to be active. you got to be active in the community. Um, but we could not do this without the support of, um, of the different police departments, the Rockwood Police Department, Harriman Police Department, Kingston. Um, Kingston Police Department, you know, and if we didn't have them,
um, we wouldn't be able to do this. And so we're just really thankful that they're going to be out there too. But um, and we always want to collect as much as we can. Um, and you know, it's I, I try to make it a competition. Is Rockwood going to win this this mm -hmm. month? Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. um, is Harriman going to win? You know, that's a it's a big deal. Yeah, how many yeah. drug arrests we've had in Rockwood? It may win. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a few down there, but that's on another story. But anyway, it wasn't being funny about that, but it's just a, yeah. it's an issue everywhere. It is. And it is. Uh, we know that people get on drugs, but these are yeah. prescription medications. These are what maybe grandma and grandpa had used, and then yeah. they're laying around the cabinets. You know, when my yeah. mom and dad passed away, we seen stuff there that before these drug take-back yeah. days were, were active yeah. that we would have loved to have this opportunity. Yeah. So if you have pet medication, something like that, yeah. Uh, take them over and let them uh, let them dispose of these properly. Yeah. And most kids that become addicted to prescription medication report getting it out of the medicine cabinet of a family or a friend. So if you have it in your cabinet, just bring it down and you don't need it, get rid of it. Sure, it's the best way to do it. And again, no questions asked. And there's always things that we need. No needles, no uh, No strangers. needles, yep. Um, you can dispose of those. And I'll come and talk about that another day. Right, good deal, good yeah. deal. Sheriff's Office also, if you can't make Saturday, have a bin inside their facility there That's on right. Ray Street, so uh, or on uh, Third Street. So if you yep. can, drop them off there. But use Food City, Kingston, also Walgreens, Harriman Midtown yep. Interchange, and then Rockwoods Walmart. That's the drop-off locations. Right. Ten to two on all Ten of them. Ten to two on all of them. They'll look forward yep. to seeing you there, and we appreciate you, Nathan. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. And uh, we'll be back with more. Stay with us. At Earl Duff Subaru, our reputation has been built on taking care of customers. We are Tennessee's only eight-time winner of the Subaru Love Promise Customer Commitment Award. This year, we also earned the Love Promise Community Commitment Award given for enhancing the areas we serve. This means you can be sure you'll have an excellent experience when you visit our store and be proud you're dealing with a company that gives back to local causes. Read our online reviews and come to Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. The all-new, completely redesigned 2020 Outback is available now at Earl Duff Subaru in Harriman. Bring your junk, cars, aluminum cans. We'll buy it on the spot and we'll pay you a lot. We treat you like family at RMG. Yeah, we treat you like family at RMG. Rome Metals, we treat you like family. Rome Metals is located just off of Highway 27 between Harriman and Rockwood. This is no ordinary table. It's a mail room, a community board, and a bank. For 30 years, this table was an anchor. These days, though, it's a very different story. Even when you prepare, life doesn't always go as planned. Today, one in seven seniors live in poverty. To learn how you can help, visit aarpfoundation.org. For three generations, Jerry Duncan Ford and Duncan Family Automotive Group have earned a reputation of dependability, honesty, and character. We're proud of our Harriman roots and are grateful to serve the growing community of East Tennessee. Just a short drive from West Knoxville, we invite you to experience the difference today. Welcome to the family. My name is Sam Leitch. About a year ago, I had a heart transplant. My life was saved on the last day that I was supposed to be on this planet. And now I know what a miracle feels like. I don't know who my donor was, but that person saved my life. Over 130 million people have already signed up and they have one thing in common. They want to save lives. Please sign up to be an organ, eye, and tissue donor. You don't want to miss your chance to save a life. October 24th, 1945, birth of the United Nations. The charter of the global organization takes effect nearly two months after the Japanese surrender ending World War II. 1952, Dwight Eisenhower promises to bring the Korean War to an end. The Republican candidate for president makes his pledge on the campaign trail. Only in that way could I learn how best to serve the American people in the cause of peace. I shall go to Korea. Eisenhower wins the presidential election and visits Korea over a month later. 2002, in Maryland, 
Authorities arrest two people in connection with weeks of deadly sniper attacks in the Washington, D.C. area. They catch John Mohammed and Lee Malvo after the series of shootings kills 10 people and wounds three. Mohammed is sentenced to death in Virginia and life in prison in Maryland. Malvo gets a life sentence in both states. 2003. The supersonic Concorde makes its last transatlantic trip, concluding 27 years of commercial service. Three of the luxury passenger jets land at Heathrow Airport outside London, all arriving from New York's John F. Kennedy Airport. 2005, civil rights activist Rosa Parks dies. In 1955, Parks made a simple decision that sparked a revolution. When a white man demanded she give up her seat on a Montgomery, Alabama bus, the then 42-year-old seamstress said no. Her act of defiance earned her the title Mother of the Civil Rights Movement. Parks was 92. And 1991. Gene Roddenberry, creator of the sci-fi TV series Star Trek, dies in Santa Monica, California. He was 70. Today in history, October 24th, Carlotta Bradley, The Associated Press. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Thursday to you. Brandon Bonds here with your Secrets to New Weather Forecast. Taking a look here at the satellite across the area right now, we are seeing clear skies overhead into your evening commute hours. Fortunately, though, we'll have cloud cover build overnight into your Friday as we'll have some shower chances as we get into the afternoon hours. Current temperatures out there, though, pretty comfortable this afternoon, sitting right now at Knoxville at 69. 68 for Clinton and Oak Ridge, 66 for Morristown, and in the plateau off to our west, Crossville sitting in those low to mid 60s. For our current surface map, we have that high pressure system stuck around the area, keeping things dry and pretty cool out there. The past couple of days has pushed off to the north and east. That'll allow for a cold front from our west to slide into the area. Cooler temperatures into your Friday and into the weekend there. But the main storyline is the shower chances as we get into Friday afternoon and through the weekend there. Looking to have up to an inch of rainfall depending on where you're at here in East Tennessee. Bulk of this system will slide through Middle Tennessee, Middle Kentucky area there. So definitely some rainfall. That'll definitely help the overall drought we're seeing across the area from earlier this morning. This is the latest release of our drought monitor for East Tennessee. An extreme drought for parts of Bradley, Hamilton, and Ray counties down to our south. And uh, we have a severe drought right outside of that with much of East Tennessee under a moderate drought. So any rainfall that we're going to see will definitely help the next couple of days here. And like I said, looking around an inch to parts of Middle Tennessee up to two to two and a half inches there. So lots of rainfall expected this weekend there. That'll definitely help the overall drought monitor for Tennessee, mainly East Tennessee, as we get into early next week. So take a look here at that model guidance over the next couple of days into your weekend there. That rain will begin pushing in by early tomorrow afternoon. Some light scattered showers coming more moderate and heavy as we get into the later part of your afternoon, overnight Friday into Saturday. Those will continue throughout Saturday afternoon on and off throughout the day there. For we'll have our last push by Sunday early afternoon before we start clearing out there and uh, drying out for the later half of your weekend into early next week. For tonight, though, expecting those clouds to begin increasing overnight, expecting lows in those mid to upper 40s and winds pretty calm. For tomorrow morning, we'll have cloudy skies to start the day there. Temperatures around that 50 degree mark by the afternoon, though. Definitely remember your umbrella out the way out, out the door tomorrow morning, expecting those showers to move in by the afternoon. Highs to be around 60 degrees. For your full forecast here, brought to you by Jane and Butcher Shop of Oak Ridge. As we get into Friday, clouds will increase by the morning hours. They're allowing for showers by the afternoon. So don't forget your umbrellas out the door tomorrow morning. Highs to be in those lower 60s. Saturday, much of the same. They're expecting showers on and off throughout the day. Highs in those upper 60s. Sunday, though, showers will begin to move out by the afternoon hours. Highs in those upper 60s. And to start your work week next week, could see some sun out there to begin the day. We could see some isolated showers on and off throughout the day with this system. Highs to be around that 70 degree mark. That's all we have here from Secret City Weather on your Thursday. Don't forget your umbrellas out the door as we're expecting showers to end your work week.
Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate that. And with that, in sports, a lot of games, uh, some games, as you'd say, have been now changed till tonight. Uh, when we move to tonight, I should say. High school football week 10, here we go. A few football games scheduled for this e for Friday has now been rescheduled to this evening due to predictions of inclement weather. Moving into the East Tennessee area on Friday night. Anderson County, now they will now play at East Hamilton this evening. They're already there. While Kingston will play host to Pigeon Forge tonight. Again, a game in Kingston tonight. And, of course, this week's rivalry Thursday game, Oak Ridge will travel to Powell tonight. That was already scheduled. That can be seen on my VLT. Friday schedule, Campbell County will be at Clinton. WYSH will bring you that tomorrow night. Their Fox and Farley football game. Oakdale at Harriman tomorrow night. Sunbright at Wartburg. These are still Friday schedules. Midway at Greenback. Gatlinburg Pit at Alcoa. Halls at Sevier County. Farragut at Hardin Valley. West at Fulton. Carter at Gibbs, Central at South Doyle, Jellicoe at Cosby. And our Channel 12, OEB Law Friday Night Game of the Week is going to be a good one. The Coalfield Yellow Jackets traveling over to Oliver Springs, the short six-mile trip to face against the Bobcats. This is an important conference game for both teams as they look towards the playoffs in two weeks. Our crew will be at Oliver Springs tomorrow night. Hopefully they won't get too wet to broadcast at 7. Kickoff starting at 7.30. The game will be live right here on Channel 12, or you can stream it on bbbtv12.com, as well as our Facebook page and YouTube channel. And immediately following Friday's game will be the Five Star Preps Friday Night Scoreboard Show, live right here with David Queener and Jonathan Cox as they take your call. So big Friday night football matchups, no doubt. Well, tonight the Minnesota Vikings and Washington Redskins kick off the week's eight NFL season with a Thursday night football matchup at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Kickoff is set for 8.20 tonight and will be televised on Fox and the NFL Network. You can also stream it using Amazon Prime. The Vikings sit in a record, actually sit in second place in the NFC North, one game behind Green Bay and are coming off their third straight victory. Meanwhile, the Redskins got shut out 9 to nothing last week with San Francisco in a rain-soaked matchup. Not doing too good as, uh, again, looks like Washington is in the midst of a forgettable season having already fired Coach Jay Gruden. And the Nationals are taking a 2-0 lead back home as Washington defeated the Houston Astros 12-3 last night in Game 2 of the World Series on Wednesday night at, at Minute Maid Park in Houston. Wow, the Nationals scored six runs in the seventh inning, totaling 17 runs in the first two games of the World Series, the most by a road team since the 1960 Yankees. And again, that game is slated for this, uh, I should say for tomorrow night, rather. The Nationals now have a 2-0 lead over the Astros in the best of seven series and will host game three in D.C. tomorrow night at 8 o'clock on Fox. And that's sports. Funeral announcements, we find Peggy Langley, Peggy Sue Ford Langley, 83 of Oak Ridge, passed away Tuesday at the Groves of Oak Ridge. The family will have a graveside service Saturday, 11 a.m. at Union Church Cemetery. Jackson Funeral Services, Oliver Springs, directing. Roy Wayne Jones, Roy Jones, age, age 61 of Oneida, passed away Tuesday. The family receiving friends 5 till 7 this evening with his going home service at 7 tonight at Black Oak Baptist Church in Oneida. Jones Mortuary is serving the family. James Jimmy Edward Shipwash. James Shipwash, 78 of 10 Mile, passed away Tuesday at Methodist Medical. He was a faithful member of Shiloh Baptist Church south of Kingston. Receiving a friends will be Friday, 5 to 7. Shiloh Baptist Church. Service will be at 7 in the church sanctuary. Those who would like to go in procession to William Cemetery in 10 Mile will meet at Shiloh Baptist 1030 Saturday morning for an 11 o'clock graveside service. Fraker Funeral Home, Kingston, directing. Robert Allen Harris, Bob Harris, age 88 of Kingston, passed away Tuesday at Jamestown Assisted Living. An active member of First Baptist in Kingston, receiving a friends will be Sunday between 2 and 4 at First Baptist in Kingston, with funeral to follow at 4. Bird will be 11 a.m. Monday morning, Coe Hill Cemetery in Morgan County with military honors. Cocker Funeral Home, directing. John William Townsend, Jr., 88 of Lenore City, passed away Monday, receiving a friend Saturday between 10 and 12 at Fellowship Baptist in Lenore City. He will be buried at Rose Cemetery, Kiker Funeral Home, Kingston, directing. Johnny Rains of Kingston, age 95, passing away Saturday last weekend at Jamestown Assisted Living, receiving a friend started at 5, goes till 7 tonight at Kikers in Kingston. 
And that's our news that we have at this time on our TV 12 coverage. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a wonderful evening. You deserve that. We'll be back with more news tomorrow, Lord willing, on another edition, a Friday edition right here on TV 12. I'm Billy Evans. Hope to see you back here then. Until then, so long. South Carolina Republican Lindsey Graham pushing for a change in the Senate in the impeachment probe of President Trump. The day after House Republicans